Hey everyone, this is Neil Napier here. It's really good to have everyone on the call today. We do have a lot of people in already and more are pouring in. Before we get started, just let me know what part of the world you're coming in from and what's the weather like where you are from right now. It's always good to know what the weather's like. It's been a bit cold Easter here, but hey, we'll get by. All right, Michael says, or Michelle says, Stuttgart, Germany. I know Olga's from Germany as well. What else? Ronnie from Chile. Now, for those people who speak Spanish, Alvin, perhaps you can send the message to everyone just in case they have it, because this time we have a lot of Spanish customers, thanks to Eric Collin and uh, Lionel. So in that case, we'll have someone taking this webinar presentation and summarizing it in Spanish. Okay, so you'll get a summary within 48 hours, hopefully, of the webinar presentation. Okay, we've got Holger. Uh, we've got Ronnie from Chile, Rich from Slovakia. We've got Ella from Croatia, which is sunny. Nice, good for you. Uh, we've got Brian from currently in Germany, but from the UK. Jeff says raining in California, that sucks. Orlando says, um, super, I'm guessing you're from Orlando. Uh, Jeff says, que chévere, I don't know. <laughs> Paula from uh, Colombia, excellent, good. Now, today's session is about email marketing. We already talked about creating membership sites, you know, how to create content for membership sites and what's the best way to make money with membership sites in another session. But in this one, we'll be talking about email marketing, more specifically how to use InstaSuite for email marketing, as well as then how to essentially grow your business by selling via email marketing. And I'm just going to go find some emails that I wanted to share with you as well on the call today, if you could give me a couple of minutes, because those emails, I can actually walk you through how I constructed everything in there and how you need to as well. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I got it. So I'll be able to show you these emails a little bit later as well. Okay, so to begin with, let's jump into InstaSuite and let me start by showing you exactly how the platform works and a few things that you need to remember. Now, as always, we won't be able to go through each and every aspect of this software, for which I do apologize, but note that we do have a lot of different things covered within tutorials. Now, even before you get started with the list builder or email marketing aspect of this software, the one thing you do need to do is set up integration. So if I go into integrations, you'll see that we have a few different integrations set up here already. We've got constant contact, which is related to email marketing. We've got get response. We've got some SMTP settings as well. I think uh, Susanna doesn't have SMTP in this one, but you can set it up. So setting up email connections can be done in two ways. Number one is where you directly integrate with an autoresponder. So we have direct connections with ActiveCampaign, Aweber, Constant Contact, ConvertKit, GetResponse, MailChimp, and Infusionsoft. What that means that if you are is that if you're building a campaign inside of InstaSuite, if you're using the Funnel Builder to build your landing pages, which we'll do in the next session, then you will be able to automatically add people to any of these autoresponder lists. All right. So when someone signs up, you can send them over to an active campaign list. You can also send them over to Constant Contact and MedKit, Get Response, Aweber, entirely up to you. Alternatively, what you can do is you can also integrate with a third-party SMTP. Now, let me explain what the difference between both is, and it is important to address that up front. When you send emails, there are two parts to it, right? So, so let's assume the example of sending a post via the postman and the post service. So when you write the post, when you write a letter, that's the first part. When you send the letter, that's the second part. So writing a letter happens on your own side. You write the letter however you want. You've got different color papers, different color pens. You can write the letter in whatever form that you want to send. Then when you've written the letter, you package it up, and then you go and give it in a post office where they take care of the delivery. So they take your letter, and they go over to the train station or flights or do whatever they have to to get your letter across to another location. So those are two parts to sending a letter. Email marketing works the same way. The first part is a part where you write the email, where you can have templates, where you have uh, basically an envelope. And the second part is the post office, you know, the, the delivery mechanism. 
That delivery mechanism is called an SMTP. I can't remember what the full form of this is, but it's called an SMTP. So within InstaSuite setup, you can write your emails, you can look at some statistics, and you know, soon when we add more things, you'll be able to look at even more statistics, but that's where it stops. You still need an SMTP to send emails via InstaSuite. So I hope the distinction is clear, and I really tried to simplify it. I apologize if it seemed patronizing, but I wanted to make sure that you understand. Things like these, Active Campaign, Aweber Constant Contact, these are both, these are two in one. So they have the writing part, and then they have the sending part, both integrated in, into one. So that's good if, um, if you want to, if you're comfortable spending, you know, $100, $200 a month for everything, then these platforms are really good. I think they serve a really good purpose if you have a good list, if you have a big list, and if you don't want any headache. But if you're okay with a little bit of technical challenge, especially if you want to save a lot of costs, then you should get your own SMTP. And when I say get your own SMTP, you don't have to set up your own website. There are other services like SendGrid, Mandrill, Mailgun, Amazon SES that help you send an email, right? So if I go to, for example, I think this one is uh, Mailgun, and then there's also Mandrill, you can look at Mandrill. If you have a list of, let, let's do some math here, right? So let me just open up a calculator. Okay, if you have a list of, let's say, 10,000 people, okay? and you want to send one email every day, so that means you send 10,000 emails every day, then that would mean that you're sending 300,000 emails. And that would cost you, if I click here, that would cost you $240 a month. Now that might seem like a lot of money, but as I will show you a little bit later, you can actually make a lot more money with this. I mean, if, if you go by my calculations, what we are able to do, for sending 300,000 emails, you can very easily, let me just do some math here, very easily make seven and a half thousand dollars back. If you have a list of 10,000 people, what I'm saying is at the bare minimum, you can make seven and a half thousand dollars if you do it just, you know, on an average way. You not, not that, you don't have to be an email copywriter to get these kind of numbers. And the cost for that would be 240. But I'll go into that a little bit more details later. If you don't want to use one of the preset SMTPs, you can also create your own. Now that is a little bit technical, I won't go into that right now. We have covered this in training inside of the tutorials page, but essentially what it involves is getting a new server, a new hosting server. Don't use a shared hosting server, like, right? So if I go to, let's say, HostGator, I don't like it, but I'll just show you the HostGator, for example. If I go to HostGator pricing, let's check this out. All right, so you can use one of these to also have your own email marketing. I mean, there you can see it says unlimited email, but really don't go for something that is shared. Go for something that is kind of, you know, your own. So, I mean, dedicated in this case, because dedicated is going to cost you more, but you can do so much more with that, right? Even with a basic plan, $79 a month, I'm confident that you'll be able to send 300,000 emails that you saw here but it would cost you less. There are a few drawbacks to this as well. One of the drawbacks being that now you are responsible for the health of the SMTP. Because like any postal delivery service, let's say if they you know, don't get posts delivered on time or if they hassle their audience, then the audience, the, the end users will say, oh, this, this posting service is bad. So their reputation goes down. So the same thing could happen to you as well. The same thing could happen to you know, Mandrill too but it just, it's more like you're giving the responsibility to someone else. So that's, you know, SMTP part. I'm gonna go back into the software and uh, show you some more beyond integrations, but let me just show you this. Okay, so when you set up an SMTP, you will get some of these details from your provider. And please don't use your hosting details here, don't use your server details, make sure that what you're using is exactly this. That's an important thing that a lot of people miss out on. So make sure that you don't use any random details. You only use details related to the SMTP. If you're unsure, don't contact us because we don't want to know. We, don't, we can't tell you. We can't help you. You have to contact your provider. So in this case, you would contact HostGator and say, okay, I want to send emails to my list of 10,000 people. You know, these are the details that I put in, need to put in. Where can I find them? and they will tell you. 
So that's how you set up an SMTP integration here. Any questions so far, let me know. And again, like I said, today we'll just focus on the email part. Uh, if there's anything that comes outside of it, I'll cover that in another session. Uh, James, curious regarding MX secure configuration. James, I'm not sure what you mean, sorry. Could you clarify? Okay, let me know. Okay, Michael says SMTP is simple mail transfer protocol. Thank you, Michael, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so James says, if you could please show how to do the integrations with SMTP that are not on your list, as I've already brought into Mailer Light. Okay, same thing, James, same thing works. Let me see Mailer Light. Let's see the pricing to begin with. So if I go here, Okay, so it looks to me like this is actually also the letter writing mechanism. So if I go into features, this would be, yeah, so they have an HTML editor as well. Maybe they don't give you an SMTP, James, or Michael. Um, so you have to check, I mean, you know, Aweber will not give you SMTP because that's their, that's their IP, that's their intellectual property. But for some businesses, they're happy to give you the, the SMTP and you can send emails with whatever other platform that you want. So you need to check this with uh, everyone. This is not the same thing. Developer API is not the same thing. So what I'm trying to get to is that you need to work with your provider to, to understand what do you have. Do you have an SMTP or do you have um, you know, something, something else? Okay. Uh, Alvin, just a point as well. I'm, I'm, all, I'm skipping the questions that you're answering, but sometimes I guess I need to go and answer them because like you said in one of them, We'll discuss it in a bit. So just leave the things that you cannot answer, and I'll go ahead and answer them. Okay. So James, I hope that answers your question with MailerLite. It's it's uh, an entire service like Aweber. Honestly, we would only integrate it if there's enough request. So it's not a big one, from what I know. So we might not integrate it. Just to warn you here. Okay. All right. My websites are with GoDaddy, which comes with 250 free emails per domain. Can I use that for right now? Uh, Lisa, no. So that's a different thing, right? That that's GoDaddy confuses people, or every hosting provider confuses with the same terms. When they say 250 emails per domain, it means that you can set up 250 emails on that domain. For example, Lisa at mydomain.com or ABC at mydomain.com. They don't mean that you can send out 250 emails. So that's a big difference. That's a very big difference. And again, like I said, that you have to contact your hosting provider for to say, hey, I want to send bulk emails, right? You basically just ask them this. Hi, I want to send bulk emails to my 10,000 customers, and I need, I give them a screenshot, and I need these details. Where can I find them? And they will tell you. Okay? Uh, if we just want to get an SMTP provider, is there one you can recommend, Ronald? I would recommend something like Mailgun. Elastic email, those two are really good. There, there's Amazon SES, there's uh, someone made a post in the InstaSuite group about Sparkle posts, so there's that as well. There are tons of options out there, you just have to basically Google it. Okay, SendGrid is so much cheaper than Mandrill, I would go with that. Definitely, Ella, I would recommend SendGrid. I'll tell you what happened there. About two years ago, we were, we've been using SendGrid for a year, and they banned us because they said, your emails look like spam emails would look like. And I'm like, they're nothing like that. But they didn't listen. So, you know, sometimes you can get banned from these places as well, but that's quite expected. And you can just, you can just move uh, forward and pick another one. Okay? All right. So, guys, for those of you who are asking, how do you integrate with this? How do you integrate with that? If it doesn't already exist, this is not the right place to ask. There is a feedback portal, and Alvin will link it to all of you again. Uh, Alvin, please make sure that you know you tell everyone about it. But if you have any integration requests, you can send it via the feedback portal. Okay? All right. But here's the cool part. As I will show you in the next session, which will be on Friday, even if you don't do integrations, you can still move leads into your autoresponder without too much hassle. But I'll show you that on Friday. We don't have to integrate everything because you don't need it. You can still use any autoresponder that you have any you know, even if you have a plugin like Mail, uh, like Mailit, even if you have a rapid email sending thing that I think Sean Donahue launched about two or three years ago, 
I can't remember the name, you can use that too with the funnel builder. But again, I'll come to that another time. So this is where you build up all your integrations. Then let's go into the list builder and let me walk you through each and every one of these. So in this case, when you first come into email settings, you can pick one or more of your SMTPs that you have integrated. Then you pull up a default name, which could be your own name, right? So the name that you want to send the email with. Then you have the default email address. So the email that you want the email to go out with. Right, so I'm just going to put in, let's say, Neil Napier, and let's try support at kbsocialmail.com. And when you have connected things, you can click on test SMTP connection. And let's say I want the email to go to neil at kbsocial.com. Let's say submit. Connection failed. So the SMTP is not set up right. I mean, like I said, I didn't set it up. I don't know how it got there, but the SMTP is not set up right and you know immediately that you need to change something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into my account where I know that the SMTP has been actually set up fine. There we go. And we'll check it out in there. So let's go into List Builder. SMTP setup. Okay, let's test SMTP connection here. Again. Submit. And bam. So we know that this SMTP has been set up right. We can move forward. The next thing you can do is add header. Personally, I don't ever use it. I couldn't even begin to explain to you how to use it. It's, it's too technical. It's way beyond my pay grade. Let's just say that. But for those of you who deal with headers and do a lot of email marketing, you can put that information in there as well. Then you can also blacklist email addresses. And this is why this feature is important. Some email addresses might be spam traps, right? So if I go into Google, let me just type this up. I'll say a uh, list of spam traps. Email. So what happens with these ones is that if you mail them, then your IP address will become blacklisted as well, right? So it's like, it's a bit like this. If you send the post via the postal service to an address where the, po the, the postman gets beaten up, you know, that would be that would count against you because you were sending emails to you were sending posts to a bad place. So there are these you know places where you can find a lot of um, spam traps email. All you have to do is copy all of them and uh, paste them in here, then save. Same with blacklist domain. Maybe you don't want to send emails to mail.ru, right? So I don't. So I will just put mail.ru here because I don't want emails to be sent to that address because for some reason, let's say none of them open my email. So I don't want to waste my money on that. You can also blacklist IP addresses. And again, it's a little bit more advanced, but all that means is that there's some networks you don't want to send email to. You can hide them from here. Then you can also choose to allow unsubscribers to resubscribe to the same list. So if someone opts out of your list and then, you know, a week later they're like, I want to get back on, they will be allowed to. You wouldn't want to stop them. It's up to you though. You can also block role-based emails from subscribing. So what, what this one means is that, you know, when people work in an office, they use something like admin at or billing at <clears throat> or compliance at and so on. And all these emails don't give really high open rate because they get mailed a lot. So you can choose to discard these, which means if someone tries to sign up via this, you basically sometimes not even going to allow or sometimes you're not going to email these leads because they're not very high value leads. So in this case, you know, you can block all these leads. You can also block, you can add more of these here. So you can just, let's say, copy all of these and paste it. Okay, so that will be blocked immediately, um, you know, from here. When you're done, click save, you get to go. So that's the first part of setting up the SMTP. Any questions so far? All right, um, <laughs> James, that's fine. Okay, keep the questions coming. Either Alvin will answer them or I'll answer them a little bit later. Let's go in and build our list then. So we've set up the SMTP and now we'll go in and build our list. Uh, let's click create list <clears throat> and uh, we'll just add a uh, list here. So we'll say um, live 17 April from Neil Napier. This is the from email address. This is the description. So this is internal. I could say this is a list 
to show how AI works. And this is the address. So you should put in your address. I'm just going to put hello world for now, but please do put your address in because you do need that in place for, because of the can spam laws. Okay. The email signature, which is optional, but you know it could help. So I could always say cheers, Neil Napier, Insta Suite. Okay. So always put in some kind of email signatures, maybe even with a URL. And when you're done, click submit and you're good to go. The next thing you do here is you can add or import subscribers. So you can either add subscribers one by one, right? And you can add the subscriber to more than one list at the same time, or you can choose to import an entire list. So if you have a CSV or a text file of your leads from somewhere, you can simply click here and you can import that entire list in here. We do ask you to select this, you know, so that we know that you have permission to mail according to InstaSuite's anti-spam policies. So please make sure you do tick mark this. So adding email leads is quite straightforward as well within here. Then in step number four, you can create a form. And let me explain why creating this, this form is important. Why is it even relevant? So if you have any other autoresponder, for example, let's say um, get response, Aweber, and whatnot. Previously, when you had to, you know, move leads into Aweber or get response from a landing page, you would have to create a form and then get the HTML code of the form and put that in the landing page, right? You can do the same thing here. Essentially, with this, you can have a landing page somewhere else on your own website, on your own blog, and you can put this form code on your own blog and you can bring the leads in from there back into InstaSuite. So not only do you collect leads you know, from the funnels within InstaSuite, but you can also collect leads from outside and you can bring them in. So in this case, you will just click on add new and you'll just, let's call this live 17 April form. And I could say, okay, I wanted to go to um, this list that I made default thank you page. So this is a thank you page that people will see would be, let's say, I don't know, this page. And if they've already been subscribed, you can send them to another page, which could be this one. And then the next step, you can choose the, you can change the confirmation email, right? So the confirmation email, you can either select to send or not send. It's up to you. But this is, you know, like the double opt-in thing, right? So double opt-in already exists here. So if someone signs up using this kind of form, you don't have to add them to your list. You can first ask them to confirm the subscription. That's entirely up to you. When you're happy with this one, then you can go to next step. You can also save this as template. You can go to next step and you can change the design. You can change the text here. I mean, you can't change the design too much. That's something we'll be working on in future, but you can change the text here. So let's select this. And let's say, hmm, I want this to be, I think this is all fine. Yeah, it's all okay. So you can change this text as you want. It's, it's entirely up to you. But I'm going to leave this as is. We have different styles as well here, but like I said, I would much prefer if you actually were able to, you know, change more things, so customize it more. So that will come in the future. And then when you're ready, you can publish this. Let's save this. And then as it would do in get response or Aweber, you get either this, which is like a host and opt-in form URL. Let me show you this. There we go. You either get this or you get the HTML code, which you can embed somewhere, right? So just as you would embed a get response HTML form code onto a landing page on lead pages or click funnels or optimize press, you do the same thing here. When you're happy with it, click save and you're done. You can always come back to it later and you can change things again if you want to. All right. Any questions so far? Let me know. We also give rough, basically, visitor numbers and opt-ins and conversion numbers if we can. That is, if you're using the same form as is. Not all the time, though. It wouldn't work all the time. Okay. Uh, I added my contact address there, but the broadcast does not have the address in the email. Uh, Holger, if you have already, I mean, it sounds like an issue. Have you logged this as an issue? Or let me see, do I have to add a specific code to add the contact address to my emails? So, Holger, are you saying you manually added the email address? 
let me know. Because I think this is something we were looking at today as well, not, not with you, even ourselves. I know we had a call today. We were looking at it and we were trying to rework some things within this section. So let me know if that's what you mean. Okay, in the meantime, we'll move on to the next part, which is sending broadcasts and sending sequences. Now, in this case, I will tell you that someone talked to a support ticket saying that I can schedule the broadcast right now, but the future broadcasts are not working. So we're checking that, we're che checking scheduled broadcast, but you can come in here, you can create an email, so you can choose how many, you know, what kind of list you want to send it to. Right, you can pick all of them as much as you want. Uh, you can limit it that, okay, I only want to send it to 100 people, maximum, up to you, I don't know why, maybe you want to save cost. Uh, then you can pick one of the template emails, you can pick up a subject line, whatever you want, I mean, anything that gets you opens, basically. You can also personalize the content, right? So if I scroll down, you can personalize the content based on subscribers, email, first name, last name, full name. Remember, you already have most of this information. The site URL as well, and managed subscription URL. This is kind of important when you want to present people a way to unsubscribe, like this one. Here. Yeah. Okay? And just like a normal editor, you put in content here in your email. So, hey, Cool. So this is how you can structure your entire email, however you want. It's up to you, but it's a simple email editor. If you want to switch to HTML, you can click here. You can switch to HTML. I know this might not be conducive for everyone, but if you do want the HTML option, that's what you can choose. Okay. Um, okay. Ah, Holger, got it, got it. It's not showing the contact address. Okay, um, Alvin, can you make a note of that and we can make sure to add that in as well because Holger is right. When the email does go out, it needs to have the address as well at the bottom because at the moment we're only collecting the address. We're not showing that in the emails. Okay, I'm going to make a note of it as well, Holger. Good catch. Good catch. All right. Cool. Okay, so if I go back now, so you can send broadcasts out. Uh, when you're done writing the broadcast, you can also preview it and test. So you can, uh, okay, let me just put this, test. Okay, you can preview like which email you want this to go out to. Submit. And again, as long as your SMTP is hooked up, you know, this will go out and uh, you will be able to get a test email to see basically what this would look like. So let me show you this one right here. You can see this is a test email that I sent, and Holger is right that the address should show up here as well, but that's how you'll be able to essentially see what content, uh, you know, what email others will see as well. So you can set things up like that. You can also check the spam score. Uh, so again, if the email is good, you can make sure that you bring down this spam score, score as close to zero as possible. Okay, let's save this. When it's done, then you choose to resend existing. So in this case, we want to add more options, but what this means is you can set up rules. So let's resend the, this broadcast to people who have not opened, you know, that email. So if people have not opened this email, then let's send them another email. Let's change the subject this time and resend. So you can do that and you can get more open rates. Sequences work a little bit differently. So with sequences, I'm going to go into this one test, which we set up, I think, some time ago. Okay. So sequences are like, hmm, how should I say this? It's like a treasure hunt of sorts. You have to think about it like that, right? You don't get all the information to you immediately. You get it over time. So we set up sequences, and I'll cover this in much more detail a little bit later, where we can send out something immediately. So when someone, or someone signs up, we can say, welcome to InstaSuite, right? Here's the subscriber name, congratulations for signing up, blah, 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 thank you so much. Here's some powerful content that you can go through. That's your welcome email. When you're done, as always, go down, preview and test if you want, check spam score, click on save step, and you're done. So this is step number zero. Then you want step number two as well. So, you know, this is what happens on day one, right? And then let's add a new step. This one will be sent two days after that. This would be, did you see that video yet? 
right? So this would be, hey, I sent you a video last week, or a couple of days ago I sent you a video, I showed three ways in which you can use InstaSuite in your business, did you have a chance to check it out? If not, you can click here and, and see it, and also, I've just added this another video, which talks about six more ways in which you can use InstaSuite. Go check that out as well, right? So you can schedule an entire email campaign series if you do that, right? So this is two, and then you can send another email, you know, on day seven. There you go. Oh, I shouldn't have, should have clicked there. So this is how you build an email sequence, and the way to test it would be you sign up yourself, and then see how you get the email sequences. All right. Within the dashboard, you see some basic statistics. So you know how many lists do you have, how many active subscribers, how many broadcasts you've sent, stuff like that. Then you will also see details. Uh, you will also see email templates here. So email templates will show you basically like you know if you use welcome email all the time, you can save it here. If you have an email series that works really well, you can save it as templates. And every new lead, new list that you create, you can you know schedule that email series for them. So this is a way to basically ensure that you take the best of your emails and save them here. Now, I will tell you this up front, that the email marketing part of this platform needs quite a bit of additions in my opinion, if you really have to compete with something like GetResponse. For example, to me, the rules need to be better, right, when you're resending the broadcast. To me, you need far more statistics about who's opening, who's clicking, you know, things like these. So this one will be majorly improved next month. You're going to see a lot of changes coming through, and I'll be happy about that because we'll be able to migrate most of our email marketing to this, which is what I want to do as well, you know, for most of our businesses. Okay, if you have questions, let me know. If not, I'll jump into the presentation a little bit and show you a few things. All right. Uh, Holger, I appreciate the contribution, definitely. Lewis is asking email versus domains. How is it going to work with the domains that Institute is going to give us? How do we have SMTP with them? Lewis, so you set up a different SMTP if you want, or the same one with each custom domain that you have. It's entirely up to you. Uh, we Well, actually, in this case, we have one integration at the moment. Only, well, okay. You can have multiple SMTP integrations set up, and you can use them as you want in different places. There's something you want to improve with integrations as well, like we want you, we want to allow you to integrate to multiple GetResponse accounts, stuff like that. But I'll have to talk to the developer about that, and that still will need a little bit of work. Okay. Does InstaSuite provide feedback about how to lower spam score when you test the spam? Score license, not at the moment. At the moment, that's a little bit too advanced, so we don't provide that. Eventually, we will build it in. I mean, I do want to see that in, but we don't really provide details on how to reduce the spam score at the moment. Okay. For emails, can you import previous made Word documents, or does only copy and post copy and paste mode work. Thomas, at the moment, only copy and paste mode works. And uh, I think we'll stick to that because if we start dealing with imports as well, there can be a lot of, um, you know, content issues about what the email looks like. There could be a lot of hidden fields as well. So we won't, we probably won't allow copy or import ever. It might only be copy and paste. Can you add attachments in emails? Like I said, it's a good question. I haven't had to yet, so I don't know. But I don't think so. I think you can definitely put in URLs, but you cannot do attachments at, at this stage. Um, I don't think so. And again, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend attachments because, you know, some some ISPs like Gmail or Yahoo, they might block your email if they see attachments in a mass email because that could be considered spammy. So I would recommend not to do that anyway. I would only recommend to use links, for example, Amazon S3 links, Dropbox links, up to you. That's entirely up to you. Okay? All right. Cool. Any other questions, let us know. If not, I'll go now more into the content part of this, this session today and talk more about how to do email marketing right. Also, you can track way better if you use uh, links instead of downloads. I agree with Michael that if you have links instead of downloads, you can see some link tracking elsewhere as well. Again, like I said, long term, we want to build in link tracking for emails within this as well, just so we can see who's clicking, when are they clicking, and stuff like that. But that's going to happen in the near future. Okay. All right. 
Okay, cool. Let's go on to the content part now. As I mentioned earlier, I do apologize for the color of this presentation. I hope it's not too bad on your eyes. If it is, please tell me. Uh, then I can just quickly go in and change the color. Let me know. Otherwise, you'll have to sit through this for the next half an hour. Can you add the notify someone at the autoresponder action? Leo, how do you mean? Uh, when you say notify someone, how do you mean? Could you explain a little bit more, please? If, it's, um, if, you, if you mean notify the user that the email has been sent, that's a, it's a good idea. I mean, I think we could do it. Could you, in that case, please put it in the feedback section of the software? Alvin can drop you a link. OK. All right, so I'm guessing the colors are fine. Let's go into email marketing. So a question that often comes up is, how often should I mail? You know, people who have a list, who don't have a list, who want to build a list, they will ask the same question, how often should I email the list? Should I email every day? Should I email every week? Should I email every month? You know, how often? Now, I'll give you the story of a, of a student of mine whom I told to basically mail his list at least three times a week. You know, stay in touch with him. Here's what happened. He was doing that fine, but then for a couple of weeks he forgot. Or let's say he didn't have anything to mail, so he didn't send them an email. So two weeks later, when he sent them an email, his open rate was really down. Right? Sometimes it can go up, but sometimes it can really backfire. Because if you're in a crowded marketplace, if people are used to getting your emails every day, and if they don't, they forget about you. It's completely normal. However, if you are in a freer market space, you know, where you don't have so much competition, then you don't need to email every day maybe once or twice a week. I know someone who had set up a six-figure a month recurring business simply by sending two emails a week. She would send an email on Wednesday and send another email on Friday. Two emails a week and she was able to, within I think 13 months, set up uh, a six-figure a month business. So the frequency doesn't really matter. I guess it does depend on your market. But I would say as much as you can, stay in front of your audience. These days, there are other ways to diversify as well. If you don't just want to do emails, you can also do Facebook retargeting to keep your brand alive. You can also do YouTube videos. You know, you can have your own blog content as well. So anything you can do to always stay out there. With emails, you just with emails you just get this added way to reach out to someone. Someone else said, you know, I don't like the limit of thousand people. I want ten thousand people. I want hundred thousand people in one domain. Now. Here's the thing, should you have a bigger list or small list? It goes with everything. It applies to both men and women, right? You can, you can kind of imagine what I'm talking about. But being bigger is not important. Being smaller is not a problem. It really depends on how you approach it, right? So if you have a big but inactive list, here are the problems. You're spending a lot of money mailing that list every time. You're spending a lot of money storing that list somewhere. You might sometimes get people who get excited by an email that you send and they will once in a while jump in, but it might not happen. I mean, it's up to you. If you can afford to pay, keep a big list. There's another problem with bigger lists. Some people say, not me, but some people who are cleverer than me when it comes to email marketing, that if you mail someone and they continuously don't email, don't open your email, your, your ranking basically goes down. So they say having a big list is not a good thing. On the other hand, you have people who say you need to have a smaller but hyperactive list. That's entirely up to you as well. You could choose to only have 100 people on your list, but if they pay you $5 a day every day for 30 days, that's pretty good money, right? But it really depends on how you want to approach your business. For some, it's a volume business, especially if you do affiliate marketing. But if you do your own products, if you do your own service, then you need a higher quality list. So again, it really, really depends on your business model. If your business model is mailing every day, you need a big list. If your business model is mailing twice a week, you don't need a big list. You're okay with a smaller list. Because you won't turn away your customers that often. The content still matters, but you know the list size is really about how much money you can make with it at the end of the day. Okay? Then, we talked about this, where should you set up your SMTP? You know, I, I talked about LiquidWeb is an option, there's SendGrid, DigitalOcean, and stuff like that. 
Um, but we covered this, but okay, but here's an important thing. I, you know, someone asked this in group before we jumped on this call, but they said, I have my shared hosting with Hostgator, should I set up my SMTP there? Number one, as I said before, please don't use shared hosting, always use dedicated hosting. Number two, and this is even more important, it's like, there's an old saying, I don't know, I mean, I, I hope it's okay to say it, if, if the kid's listening in, maybe you want to ask them to turn away for a second. But there's an old saying which says, don't ship where you eat. Email marketing is the same thing. For a lot of people who do email marketing, your emails will end up in spam one time or another, right? If your email ends up in spam quite often, then the ISPs are gonna basically blacklist your IP. So they're gonna look at your IP and they're saying, you're sending us crap. So we're gonna just blacklist you. Now, sure, you get blacklisted and that's a problem. But if you're only doing it for email marketing, you can dump that SMTV and you can move on to a different one. That's fine. But if you are also hosting your websites on there, you're screwed badly, badly. Because now that IP address, which also has your website on it, is blacklisted as well. Which means when people land on your website, website, they see, oh, this could be a spam website, or this could be a, an unsecure website. Are you sure you want to go there? And you don't want that for your bread and butter. You don't want that for your business. So when you're setting up an SMTP, keep it as far away as you can from your server, from where you're hosting your websites. And that way, if something does go wrong with email marketing, which it eventually will, I mean, you might say I'm, I'm the cleanest person, sure. Eventually it might. Someone might get upset. A competitor might get on your list and say, screw this guy, I'm going to run his business into the ground, and they will keep sp pressing spam on your emails. Could happen. Hypothetical, but it could happen. In that case, you don't want your websites to be taken down as well. So whatever you can do, always keep your SMTP far away from your main business. Okay? All right. Let me see. Are there any questions? Uh, I think uh, Alvin's already answering questions in Spanish. That's great. Can we use G Suite Google with Insta Suite? Um, I think we, Lewis, we actually talked about this in the group today as well. That you shouldn't use Google uh, to do these kind of emails because it'll backfire eventually. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next thing, which is. Uh, let's see here, yeah, how much can a lead make me? So again, this goes back to the point about, you know, bigger leads, uh, bigger list and then less active or smaller list or more active. But here are my numbers and I'm giving you some sample numbers, I'm not giving you my exact list size, I'm just giving you some sample numbers. But this number is true. So for every open, we, we track it and this is for low ticket promotions that we do, this is not even our own products, low ticket promotions that we do. For every email that we get an open on, we make 25 cents. That might not seem like a lot and that is completely fine. But that's that's what we get, right? So for basically, let's say if I email 10,000 people, if I have 10,000 people on my list, if I email them today, you know, I'm going to get 1,000 opens and based on my numbers that I showed you, I will make $250. That's not a lot of money. It's really not. I understand that. But, it stacks up. That's $250 a day, multiplied by 30, and you're looking at about 7,500, I think, right? Let's do some math here. So 250, yeah, that's what we did. 250 by 30, we're looking at 7,500. And remember, our cost for this, as I showed you earlier, is only 240, so my ROI here is 3,000% ROI which is really cool. So that's the rate that I always look at. So this is something I have never shared publicly because I think it's something that we have discovered uniquely to our own. I don't believe in that stat that for every email that you have on your list, you should get a dollar. I think it's BS because, you know, leads get old. They're not as responsive. Uh, people move on to a different thing, so they might not be as responsive, but you should measure the open rate. You should always keep your opens high because that's my number. If you can beat it, awesome for affiliate promotions, right? So basically when I say affiliate promotions, it means that for my own products, it's half a dollar per open. If you get that, perfect. It's great. But if you don't get that, you should look to improve it. 
So use this as a benchmark in your business. I think this could be the most important benchmark that you could have right now. But in past, it used to be how many leads do you have, but I think it doesn't work anymore like that. Now it's all about the open rate. Okay. So let me look at Holger's question, and uh, it's an important one. Holger says, if I understand you right, do you mean that a dedicated SMTP provider has its own IP address compared to your hosting provider where you have the domain and website registered? Holger, yes. So let's say I use SendGrid as SMTP provider, but send that Holger at email address.com from SendGrid. Is the domain not blacklisted at the same time, or is it only a problem with the IP addresses at SendGrid? And get so Holger, of course the domain is an issue as well, but that's not going to blacklist your whole domain. Let's say, okay, great question. Holger says, if I send an email from Holger at mydomain.com and that ends up on the blacklist, will mydomain.com will always be on the blacklist? It will for email marketing. Okay? It will for email marketing. But when people land on your domain, mydomain.com, they will still be able to browse it easily. They wouldn't get any objections there. But when you set up another email, let's say holger2 at mydomain.com, yes, you know, that will probably go to spam. Because now your domain is associated with sending spam emails. Okay? But if you separate it out to, you know, let's say if, if now your domain is sitting on Liquid Web, but your SMTP is on SendGrid, then even though your domain might be sending spam, your actual site is not the problem site. So that wouldn't get block list, uh, blacklisted. Does that answer your question, Holger? Let me know. But also, I just want everyone to say yes if you are still with me. I hope I haven't put you to bed. But this is a very, very important number. This is the most important number that you can have. Forget about what everyone says about $1 per lead. It's lies. It's, it's something they put out there to kind of make you feel like you need to have a bigger list. What I'm saying is you don't. You know, you can still have a big list. If you do, great. I, I appreciate that. But what you want to do is you want to squeeze out this per open. Now, here's the thing. When you send a pre-sell email, you know, we're not selling anything. You're going to make zero dollars. That's fine. But then you have a sales email after that, right? Look at how much you made then. Combine them together, then create a, an average in that case. So this is the number that you should be aiming at. If you have a thousand leads uh, at the moment, you know, you might get, let's say, assuming 10% open rate, you mail every day, you'll get 3,000 opens, which means you'll make $750 a month. That should be your minimum goal. Anything over that, you're doing awesome. Share what you're doing with us if you're doing more than 750 on affiliate promotions. If it's your own product, it'll be more like $1,500 if only you have a thousand people on your list. So that's the number that you should go for. You gotta keep your open rates high though. That's important. Then, let's talk about treating your audience right. What I mean in this case is that, you know, how should you talk to your audience? What should you give to them? Should you always be selling to them? You know, stuff like this. It's, it's important because no one talks about it. No one talks about it openly anyway. So there are many ways of doing this, right? The many ways of treating your audience, right? I think you should have a little bit of professional and playful tone. It depends on, of course, what your business type is like. I'm not going to dictate that. It's really about how you run your business. I know some people who really mix entertainment with their emails. It's up to them. I try and keep it more factual, more up to the point. It does mean that I don't attract people who want to be entertained in emails. Instead, I attract people who want information quickly. So that's, you know, how we do it. But typically, when you email people, you should do it in a sequence, so to speak. Now, you, it doesn't have to be a repeated sequence, but it should still make sense. So what I quite often do when someone new joins my list, what I quite often do is I try and build trust, first of all, and then I you know, nurture it, I give some value, and then I recommend something. And then I recommend something and build some trust by showing me using it. When I'm done with that recommendation series, then I go into, again, nurturing, giving some value, again, building some trust, because remember, I've used them some trust here. And then I again give some nurture and value, and then I recommend again, and the cycle keeps on going like this. This is just one way of doing it. But 
this is not really a sequence of emails either, right? I'm not saying, okay, email number one, you tell them how bad your life was and now it's good. Email number two, you give them a tip. Email number three, you sell them something. No, it's not structured like that. You know, just the trust part might take three emails instead of one. Recommend may only take one email if you do it right. But my point is that it's like building karma points. If you know blackjack, you know, when you play blackjack, if you're counting cards, then you have to keep a track of, you know, is the table hot? Is it cold? Are the numbers high? Are the numbers low? You need to keep track of those numbers, right? If the table becomes cold, you need to walk away. It's the same thing here, same thing as blackjack. If you use up too much karma selling something, your next email shouldn't be about selling. It should be about giving value. Of course, you can combine value with selling. That's fine. But I'm just saying that you shouldn't overuse the respect and love that your audience give you. Okay? So that's important. You need to treat your audience right. There are many different ways to do it. This is what I recommend, a combination of trust, nurturing, recommendation, and then trust nurturing, recommendation, in an order where you feel comfortable. One thing I really, really want to add to InstaSuite long-term, and by long-term I mean, you know, maybe six to nine months down the line, is lead scoring. I mean, that would be fantastic. Where you can give leads scores based on when they open an email or they click a link. If you can give them scores, you can realize exactly where someone is at any given point in time. And you can sell to them accordingly. Right? So that's something that will build over time. Olger, I think I've moved forward. It's, it's getting a bit technical. Do you mind if I answer that question elsewhere? If you can just ping me on Facebook or something, I'll answer that there. Okay? So, uh, yeah, so the lead scoring is one way to do it. I mean, you know, this happens in, in betting as well, for example. I know, like, I was really heavily into betting forecasting a few years ago. And you have systems where you give team points for their win, and uh, you take away points for their loss, and then you compare them with another team to see who will win, right? So it's a game in a way at the end of the day. To me, it's a numbers game. I mean, of course, I understand that at the end of it, we have an audience. And the higher my benchmark is, the more value I want to give. That's completely fine. It's a given. But it also does mean that if you can't judge someone's emotions by their open or click-through rate, then at least you can look at a number and you can see how it's going to go. So this is how I would recommend you can treat your audience right. It's up to you though, still. Then let's talk about combining memberships and emails. And there is, in my opinion, a simple way to do it. And I'll talk about that now because I covered membership in the last session and it makes sense that now I talk about email marketing combined with it. So let me actually go into the software and give you a demo of this. So within membership site, as we discussed, let's go back here, you can set up content to drip feed, right? So if I go into set of products, if I go into, let's say this one, if I go into contents, there we go. I can take this content and I can say, let's drip feed this. So let's drip feed this content on, say after three days when someone signs up. Right, so three days after purchase is when we'll drip feed this content. So here's what I can do with this. When this content goes live for them, at the same time, because you know they would have joined my email list on day zero. So within my email autoresponder series sequence, I can on the third day or even the fourth day, just to be safe on the fourth day, I can send, hey, yesterday we added a new lesson to the software, to your training area. You can go ahead and check it out there. Okay, this way, you are able to automate your email marketing to match your membership site. And this will dramatically improve your stickiness rate. This will get people to come back and watch the, the training because you have scheduled it in advance. I mean, someone asked about how do we automate this? This is how you automate it. So not only do you set the content to drip feed, but also as soon as the content goes live, you send people an email and you say, hey, I've just added a new lesson to module number one you can go ahead and check it out in the members area. Bam, you're done. Does that make sense? Is that something you can do as well? Let me know. So if you build a membership site, if you drip feed content, you can also build your emails to match that. That's how you can 
work with this together. If you had something like, let's say, get response or active campaign, this wouldn't be so easy. But if you want to build a membership site in conjunction with your email marketing, you can do that in, you can do that in this case. Then the next thing is automating email marketing. This is something, again, that I think we can dramatically improve in Suite on. But over time, you should improve your emails. You know, once you write, let's say, an email series for 30 days, you write 10 emails sent over 30 days, you're like, I'm done. Now I can just retire. It doesn't work like that. People's expectations change. You might find some emails are not working as the others. Again, it'll you know, help more when we have the open rate and click-through rate clearly visible in this. And then you will also realize that you're not getting as many sales as you want. So you've got to go back in. You've got to change up the sequence. Maybe some emails are getting a lot of people to unsubscribe. Again, in that case, you need to go back and change the sequence. So this is important. You need to always work with your emails. You can't just write one and sit back and say, now it's all going to be automated and I can live a happily ever after. You always need to com continually improve this as well. Now, we'll talk about the art of selling. And uh, this, is, this is very, very crucial, by the way. So if you, if you haven't been paying attention, this is the time you really should pay attention. Okay, um, Lisa is asking, but don't you need to be able to segment your email list to do this properly, to only send to people who bought? Lisa, uh, Lisa, sorry. Yeah, definitely, you need to do that. And the way to do that is um, going into membership setup. You can go into actions. So you can say when someone buys this level, then put them into this email list. Right, so put them into, let's say, this email list. So as soon as they buy, they will also get added to an email list. You don't need to do anything manually for that. OK. Um, Lewis, I missed your question. Sorry, could you repeat your question if you have any? I might have missed it. Let me know. OK, anyway, if I head back here, uh, let me just check if I have any messages, because I'm not wearing my headphones. They're a bit heavy. Okay, all clear, all clear, okay. So this is perhaps one of the most important slide of your entire email marketing life, okay? This really is one of the most important slide of your email marketing life. So let me ask you this question. If I want to, at any given point, at any given point, you need to belong, or you belong rather, sorry, to one of these five states for any given thing. Let's say if I ask you, would you buy solar panels for your roof? Tell me, just answer this. Are you unaware of what solar panels are? Are you aware of why you need them? That means are you problem aware? Are you solution aware? Like, do you know that there are solar panels out there? Are you product aware? Like, do you know what my company is about? Or are you most aware, which means that you're ready to buy, basically, and you're just looking for the right opportunity? So if I talk about solar, pa solar panels on your roof, which one of these do you think you are? Let me know. Alvin, could you answer Lewis's question, or could you at least, you know, take his Skype or something and, and discuss with him there? Okay, back to solar panels and your roof. If I talk about solar panels or roof, are you completely unaware? Are you aware of the problem of electricity, not having enough or it being expensive? Are you aware of the solution that you can do it with solar panels? Are you aware that our company does it? Or are you just ready to buy from us? Which one is it? Joy says product of it, right? Which means that Joy understands that we as a company offer solar panels. That's great. What about everyone else? And this is an important thing you need to know about your audience, because they will belong in one of these five states, right? Let me give you an example, a more practical example, I guess. Uh, and this relates to InstaSuite. So when you got an email in your inbox and recommended InstaSuite to you, what was your initial thought? You know, the email would have started by saying that maybe you're not aware, but paying for six platforms every month is getting expensive. 
that's a big problem that people are spending a lot of money. Maybe you are spending a lot of money as well. Did you know that there are solutions out there that can help you bring everything in under one roof? Did you know that InstaSuite is that solution? Do you want to buy it? Right? So it's basically moving the people through these five stages. It's like I'm even completely unaware that it is a problem. I mean, I don't even think about, you know, six different things. Or here I think, okay, I know it's a problem. These tools are expensive, right? I, I know that much. And here you think for the solution of where you think, okay, I know that there's something out there that I can use. I mean, I know that, you know, it's expensive maybe, but it does exist. Or then you can realize, okay, I know that InstaSuite exists and it's not that expensive compared to everything else. I'm aware of it. And the last option is, okay, InstaSuite is open to buy right now. I'm going to go ahead and get it, right? So this is the five stages with which you basically move people across, okay? Sam says, I guess I was at the beginning of uh, product aware when I bought InstaSuite, then use the trial to finish the job. Sam, that's great. Perfect. So you were product aware, but you still, you know, have to learn a bit more to try the product to be basically become completely aware. And that's what I mean. Now, I want you to give me examples of kind of businesses that you're involved in. Give me an example of what you sell, and I'll talk about the stages that your audience is in and how to sell according to those stages. So give me, throw some examples at me. Give me some ideas of what you're actively selling at the moment, and I'll break down your audience mindset based on that. Okay. Great. Jose says reputation. Lysa says business coaching. Lysa, am I pronouncing your name right, by the way? I hope I am. If not, please tell me off. Okay, let's talk about business coaching for a second because that one came up first. Let's talk about business coaching. So Lysa might reach out to... So, so Lysa, imagine this for a second, right? You're standing in the middle of the street and you're shouting to people, hey, come and get your business coaching. Come and get your business coaching from me. No one would care. They're completely unaware that they're is even something like running a business. I mean, they're happy in their job. Why would they Why would they do this, right? But here's the thing, Lysa, you get the maximum exposure here, standing in the middle of the street, but you get zero audience. You get zero people willing to buy something from you in that case because they don't know you. They don't know what you're trying to do, so they're completely unaware, right? But then imagine walking into... Uh, you know, one of those places where people don't have a job and they go in and they're trying to get a job, right? You walk in there and say, hey, I'm Lysa, I can help you build a business. I can help you make money online. There people are like, okay, I understand that I don't have money and that's why I'm interested. So now here your audience is a little bit more interested, but they might not still buy you because they don't know you. They've never had a business before. So, you know, they might not be interested. Then you go in another room inside that building. And this time you talk to people who have maybe already in past ran a business. You tell them, hey, listen, I know you've run a business before. I know it's been unsuccessful, but don't worry. I can help you set up a business. And they'd say, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm interested because I'm aware that having a business is a good thing. Tell me more, right? That's your next stage. Then the next stage is you say, okay, come meet me at this place. You know, this is my office. Come meet me there. They can't meet you there, now they're product aware. They're aware of who you are. It's, it's like a warm lead in a way. So they're aware, they're aware of who you are and they're ready to buy, you know, basically when, when, when the time is right, right? And then Lysa, at the pitch, at the end of the pitch, you say, okay, what do you think about this? You know, I'm getting start. We are starting our next batch tomorrow. If you want to get signed up, today is the last day, right? So at this point, those people are most aware. They're like, okay, I'm completely in the zone. I know Lysa is the best person I can, who can help me with setting up my business, so I'm going to work with her, right? So you basically have moved someone from on the street into a meeting with you and then closed them to work with you, building their business. So this is how you essentially move people from unaware to most aware stage. Sometimes you might find people who are product aware, sometimes you might find people who are completely unaware, sometimes you might find people who are most aware. I mean, I get approached from people on Facebook saying, Neil, I want to buy InstaSuite, you know, where's the cheapest link to buy it? And I link them to the yearly solution. 
and I say, okay, this is what you can pay right now, $697 a year, and I hope you find it useful, right? In that case, those people are most aware. The only objection might perhaps be, are you going to support it long term? We say yes, and then we sell them to it for $697 a year. So my point is, regardless of your business, you can move people through a list of steps. I'm going to use Holger's example as well. Holger says I'm in Forex niche and trying to sell my coaching program and making beginner course with videos. Holger, like I discussed with you today, um, you know, these stages will apply to you because if you think about it, the, the market that you were tapping into, so Holger said that I've collected a list of 500 people from Nigeria who are interested in Forex trading, right? So remember, they are interested in Forex trading. So they're at the solution aware stage. So they know that there's a solution and they've come to you for that. They don't know you have a product to sell. They just know it's a solution. So there's somewhere here, I would say, or just you know in the middle here somewhere, right? Let's say if I pick another example, a uh, natural SMA, XMA healing course, Ms. Jana says, okay, well, you probably sell it, send it selling to people who already have the problem, right? So they're definitely problem aware. They also know a solution exists, but maybe they don't know that there is a natural solution. So they're kind of still maybe between here, between the problem and the solution, right? Social media management says Gary. Gary, social media management, you can either sell to people like United who already messed up, or you can sell to people who haven't yet messed up. If they have messed up, they are probably, you know, past the solution stage. They, they know a solution exists, they just need the right kind of product. If they haven't messed up, maybe they don't even know there's a problem. They might think everything is okay, everything will always be okay, right? Does that make sense, guys? Let me know if I'm kind of if I'm hitting some some right points here because I think it's important that you're completely on board with this. Okay, Holger, no problem. It's it's completely fine. Uh, so yeah, this is important to realize who you're dealing with because you deal with people differently, right? You deal with different people differently. So for example, we have a website called Jobrack where we sell. Uh, you know, we're kind of the middleman between connecting entrepreneurs, businesses, and people from Eastern Europe. So to connect them, we have to also take people through these five stages. You know, the, in this case, I, I gave this to my, my staff, actually, to write an email series. So I told her, I said, listen, what is our unique selling point? Our unique selling point is that people can come to us and hire for value, loyalty, and efficiency in Eastern Europe. They can hire for these three different things within Eastern Europe. Now, we are only targeting people who are ready to hire. We're not targeting people who don't even have a business yet. You know, we don't want to go down to that, that level. We want people who can pay already, people who are making at least $1,000 a month. So for that reason, who are the unaware? Now, our unique selling point, remember, is Eastern Europe. So unaware are the people who don't even know that they can hire from Eastern Europe, who have probably never hired from Eastern Europe, have never thought about it for whatever reason. Maybe they think, you know, they're all uh, trans Transylvanian. Yeah, maybe they all have bangs. Maybe they don't speak English. I don't know. Whatever prejudices they have, but they're unaware at this stage, right? Most likely, we don't want these people anyway because it would take too long to educate them. Too long. One, you know, with one email we can do it, and that's why I decided. I said, okay, people who sign up with us are people who are on our website. They land on our website. The fact that they're landing there, they are intrigued by people from Eastern Europe. So at least in the first email, we can tell them why they need to hire from Eastern Europe. So that's what we do. In the second email, they're problem aware. Now the problem could be, you know, I'm running my business for 80 hours a week, or I'm not making enough money, or I'm tired. I didn't spend enough time with my family. Those are the problems. So we write two emails about the problems. Do you suffer from this? Are you struggling with this? This way we can pinpoint to people where we can help them eventually, right? Or where they need help rather. Not we, but where they need help. The third step is solution aware. Most signups actually fall here quite often because these people already know us or they know about us. That's why they come to our website because we don't have a lot of organic traffic still at the moment. But most people are solution aware. In this case, we send them three emails. You know, we explain to them one more time why hiring from Eastern Europe will help them free up their time, why hiring from Eastern Europe will help them scale their business, and why hiring from Eastern Europe is easy. So we sell them on the idea 
at this stage. We sell them on the solution, that solution exists, and it could be good for them. Then we do two emails on product aware. In this instance, we tell people that, hey, this is what JobRack does. JobRack is good because of this. Here are a couple of testimonials. Here's what other people are saying about us. Here's what you can get out of it. So this is now we are making them more and more product aware. So that when they think about hiring, now they will only connect it with JobRack. And finally, is the most aware scenario. In this scenario, we have already worn them up. They're ready to buy. Maybe they don't know what package to get. Maybe they want to talk to someone. But now we're going for the sale aggressively. I mean, really aggressively. So now we tell them, hey, listen, I know you've been thinking about it. I know you've been thinking if this is the right thing for you or not. But here's why it is. If you're still not sure, here's a page to book a one-on-one -on -one meeting, meeting with me. We can talk. And I can help solve these you know, different challenges that you're facing at the moment. Let me know. So this is where we really go in for the kill. We will really say, okay, today is the last chance I'm giving you this $100 discount. You can go ahead and get it or not. It's fine. But if you do, then we can find a person for you to work with you in the next three weeks. So this way, we are moving them through the chain ourselves. If we know that we get most of the signups here who are solution aware, then we can even skip past this stuff. Okay? But you need to build your email sequence in the same way. Now, it doesn't need to be a 10-part email series. It could only be a 7-part email series. Minimum 5, I would say, but 7, 10, 15, 20. Because when you're done with this, when you're done with this, these people will already be in most aware situation. After that, you don't go back to unaware. You know, after someone's aware knows you well, you don't go back to unaware. You go to solution aware or product aware. Again, you send them good emails about how job rack is improving a lot of other people's fortunes, how you know natural eczema medicine from our store has already helped hundreds of people. You send them those emails. You basically now wait for them to buy or wait for them to opt out, whichever works. So build an email series. It might not always go right first time around, but it will eventually help you structure something so that you can move people through a cycle. And when they hit this cycle, when they hit the cycle, most likely they will buy. I mean, for someone who follows through all the way, trust me, 90% of them will buy. 10% of those who won't would probably be because they, they you know, think the price is high. But 90% of the people who read all your emails will buy. So you need to focus on that. You need to focus on taking people through a journey, taking people through a journey over time. All right? Cool. Let me know if you have any questions about this, and I'm still happy to answer them for you. I know um, I know this is more kind of application-based, but I wanted to cover that because all the tutorials are there already. I didn't want to waste too much time on that. This is more about how to get further with this, with InstaSuite. Okay? So please let me know. I'm still here for another five, seven minutes at the very least. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. If not, we can end the session early. I'm just waiting for Alvin and Bilal to answer a couple of questions in Spanish. Okay, Gary says, if you get a chance, can you go through unaware email, please? Of course, Gary. So unaware is people who are even unaware that the whole concept exists. So I used uh, Lysa's example earlier. Imagine Lysa is a business consultant. If Lysa walks to the middle of the street or middle of the town square and starts shouting, let me build your business, let me build your business. Those people wouldn't care, most likely, because they're unaware that they even need to build a business, right? If I think about, um, let's say, more specific example, Gary, I can find yours. Let me see. If I, yeah, social media management, right? So, Gary, trying to sell social media management to someone who's not on Facebook, you're selling to an unaware market. Trying to sell social media management to a business that is only based in physical world, you know, they're unaware. They don't even have budget for social media marketing, right? You wouldn't get very far with them. So you have to spend a lot of time educating them. And as long as you are okay doing that, great. But if you don't want to do that, it's a problem, right? Yep. Jose says, or Jose says, people do not buy because they perceive value is low. But when they perceive value is high, they pay. They will pay whatever. I agree. I sorry. I completely agree. I agree. 
Leo says, Neil, can you clarify the general targeting for people to use Facebook ads, for example, for B2B? Uh, I do have a little bit of experience, Leo. I know Alvin has more. But can you clarify the general targeting for people to use Facebook ads, for example, for B2B? So B2B is a little bit tougher for Facebook ads because, I mean, even we've tried it, we found it a bit tough because now you're targeting people who make big decisions, right? B2B sales are typically higher value. So ads are not the best way to go, in my opinion. I think more cold approach or referral-based approach is the best way to go. But if you are doing it, you need to hire people who, for example, are entrepreneurs or business owners, CEOs, you know, managers, stuff like that. You can't hire people who, no offense, work like a waiter or waitress, for example, because they won't make business decisions. They won't make decisions about, you know, what things to stock up. So you need to understand where you write target audiences and you need to approach it accordingly. For Facebook ads, like I said, you probably need to look at their job profile and you need to look at um, something like uh, a manager, CEO, entrepreneur, owner, stuff like that. Okay. Got it. So it's Carlos about the replay. Uh, Leo, is that okay? Let me know. I think Alvin also pointed out, and I'll share with everyone, you can always find groups or interest based on small business owners, but best to work with them first and join trade shows. So yeah, you can do that as well. Okay. On the next session on Friday, we'll talk about funnel building. This time though, we might only do opt-in pages because that's already quite a lot to discuss. Then we'll do another session for landing sales pages and so on. Any other questions I can answer, please let me know. When I create and build a 10-part series and I want to beta test it on myself, can you remind me, do I do this as a drip in an email broadcast or is it the sequence? Thomas, it's the sequence. So if it's a 10-part series that you want to automate, it's a sequence. Okay. Carlos, at the moment, there are no, because InstaSuite is relatively new, we don't have a list of uh, freelancers who can help you with the initial setup, I'm afraid because this is really relatively new. There will be some eventually, but not right now. Okay, Michael says, thank you for the training. Got some really good golden nuggets here. Keep updating this suite in a very good way. Michael, thank you, I appreciate that. Olga, you said in the beginning of this webinar you wanted to check your mailbox for emails. Are you going to share emails? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that whole group, but I think like I showed some test emails did arrive. Let me show you this. Some test emails that did arrive, so we do have this in place. Right, so I know the test emails are working. Clearly the unsubscribe stuff is missing right here and the address is missing as well, but that part is working. Okay. Annette says, Neil, thank you for everything. Yep, no problem. Awesome content. You're welcome. Will there be a replay 24 hours? But Ralph, please also join the Facebook group. If you're not a part of Facebook group, let me post a link here. Please do join that because we'll be discussing. I'll be sharing a lot of stuff in there, so I want you to be involved in there as much as you can, please. Okay. All right. Great. Excellent. Have a good rest of the day. We'll talk soon. Friday, we'll do another session for funnels, more about opt-in pages because I think there's a lot to discuss, especially connecting with different things and also thank you pages, you know, stuff like this. All right, so we'll talk again on Friday till then. Stay active in the group. I'll be sharing more stuff as we go, go forward and I'm looking forward to talking with you. Uh, same time, Carlos, on Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. So we'll continue with the same time. I think it's the easiest one for everyone. Okay, take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Talk soon. Bye.